He's a two-time heavyweight boxing champion. But George Foreman will be the first to tell you the most important title he's ever held is Dad. Fatherhood by George. Why'd you decide to write it? It's strange because you, your life goes so swiftly. You look up one day, you're a teenager. Next day, you're a grandfather. And you want to decide, I sure hope my kids don't make the same mistake. So you write a book to kind of imprint for your children, first of all. Then it's for their families and their friends. Well, you also have credentials. How many children? We have 10 kids, five sons, five daughters. And you, of course, the inevitable question, they're all named George. I named all my sons George Edward Foreman. And I tell people, if you're going to get hit as many times as I've been hit by <laughs> Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Ken Norton, Evander Holyfield, you're not going to remember many names. <laughs> and, and the girls? Ah, uh, that's Georgetta, that's Frida George, and at one point my wife said, look, I'll remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> that's Michi, uh, Natalie, and Leola. And looking at your children now, uh, pride in your heart? I look at my children, and the one thing I'm most proud of in my heart are my children. They've gone on, some of them, to stand the test, to get college education, and that's the hardest thing in the world to achieve. But most of all, they're good parents. And that's mm. what I'm proud of. One of the things you write about in the book is that one of the things you can give your children, very important, is time, time with them. You know when you've been a successful parent, when each of your kids come to you individually and say, look, I need a little time to myself. Let me have my life. And they think they're telling me off, but it's a thing of pride when they tell me, I've been in their life long enough, give them some space. Did you take time to know them individually and be able to nurture them and identify, well, out of 10, each individual in their gifts and their abilities? Did you spot that stuff pretty early on? You got to look for all the things, the qualities in one kid. The worst thing in the world is to think, I've got another daughter. I have another son. Mm. Each are different people. Mm -hmm. You can't use the same remedies. You can't use the same harshness or the same slackness. You've got to understand that each child is different and you got to treat them differently. His daughter, Georgetta, has fond memories of life as a foreman kid. You know, one of the things I, I like to talk about is dad, um, you know, he has 10 kids. But growing up, he made sure that we all had our special time. There was even a time when we all had our own days. There was a Georgetta day or George the second day or whatever, and he took that time out to make sure that that day you had whatever you wanted to eat, whatever you wanted to do, and he took out time to get to know who we were and who we are now. With each one of them, did they ever feel that they were competing with your fight game? You're the heavyweight champion of the world, and a lot of times it's easy for children to start thinking, you know what, I'm in competition, not with my dad, but, it's, but the fight business. So I've had to deal with that, and I had to stop what I was doing. And a lot of times they said, no, I just can't do it this time. Why? My child is graduating from school. You actually did that? I had to be there for them, sit out on the field when I'm freezing, and I could be making $100,000 some other appearance, and watch them with the flags. <laughs> you know, so, so they would know that they were number one in my life. When I was four, I was, um, I had a, my dad bought me this pink, ba um, pink bike and it had a big pink basket, pink and white basket on the front, and it had training wheels on it, and I loved it. Even though I was a tomboy, he bought me a pink bike. I don't know about that, but I got on the pink bike, and I was so excited I had training wheels, and then one day he says, we have to take the training wheels off. You've got to learn to ride on your own. And I was so afraid, and he was like, you're going to be okay, and he just kept holding the back of it. And I was like, Dad, I'm going to fall. You know, I'm going to fall. And he was like, no, I got you, I got you. He took the training wheels off, and I, and I didn't realize he had let me go. And I was riding, thinking he was still holding on to me. But and that's sort of been the way life has been since, that, I mean, most of the time he's holding on, and then he lets go, and then he holds on and lets go. So I never know when he's letting go, but I'm riding pretty much by myself. That's a good metaphor for life. <laughs> that's good. And you also have a good wife. Yep. Her name? Mary is a good wife. We call her Joan. But the best thing that happened to me was finding a good wife who understood that, uh, Children are not just something you can just have today and then say that was something that happened in the past. It's an ever-present thing in your life, and it's wonderful to have a wife to understand that. You may have even an ex-wife or an ex-husband, but you can never have ex-children. You admitted you weren't perfect, and you made a lot of mistakes. And with your children, 
When you made mistakes, you really blew it, whatever it was. Did you ever go to them and say, I was wrong? Would you forgive me? Did you ever do that? Oh, that is the hardest thing in the world. But you must learn to say it to your children, I'm so sorry for what I said. Did you give me another chance? And sometimes, even harder than that, you don't even have to say you're sorry. You just say, here's some money. <laughs> yeah, okay. And they'll know, boy, I got him. He know he's, he know he was wrong now. Why? <laughs> he, bought, he tried to buy me off, and it worked. So if, if if one of them went off and did something you thought was against the principles that you raised them in, and they really blew it, and they come back to you, how did you treat them? I told you so, or what did you? How did you respond to that? And raising children, you know because life brings forth those things where you do what you should never have done and what I've taught you never to do. And when my kids have done those things, I just kind of look at them and say, now you know life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now you know life. George offers three points of advice to parents. When you're raising children, you got to understand that you got to put certain things first. Always put something first. Time is number one. Embracing is number two, and never allowing them out of your life. That's number three. Don't ever let them think that they're gonna someday be out of your life. 